Reverse engineering in biology is what mathematicians, applied mathematicians, computer scientists do once they come to biology. Um, to a large extent, biology has been a descriptive science. Uh, you observe phenomena, uh, you notice uh, correlates in those phenomena, uh, and you describe those correlates. So you say, as, a as embryo develops at this point, certain things happen. And at this later point, you see these other things happening. You know, the, the uh, first there is a beating heart, then embryo hatches, then it starts uh, swimming and feeding. Um, or as cells differentiate, there is a certain shape, um, then you observe a function. Those are correlates. Of course, what we want in science are causal models. Uh, you want an explanation that uh, a certain step happens as a reaction to a particular perturbation. So there is a direct dependence between how you run a particular experiment and what you can learn from this experiment. So data analysis, which allows you to learn those causal models, uh, has been named reverse engineering in biology. We would like to find mechanistic models, uh, like little wheels that rotate inside and turn one another. It's a particular uh, skill in applied math and statistics that happen to be very useful in biology. Uh, an example uh, would be coming into a system with multiple perturbations. For example, you have uh, multiple drugs, drugs which block certain components of the cell. You could imagine starting with uh, cell culture um, derived from cancer. You study um, metastasis, whether those cells detach and move around. You notice that particular chemicals, drugs, affect how much cells move. You would like to understand what is it particularly inside the cell that is a target of those drugs. So you could attack that particular component more precisely to prevent metastasis, for example. But you have drugs which are uh, not very specific. So it is like having a bunch of switches you can flip on and off and watch the effect. Only every time you flip one switch, you don't just turn on the light, you also change temperature in the room uh, and perhaps you shake the floor. And as you, as you flip another switch, you turn the light differently. Maybe you change the color of the light and you turn on a fan. So your, your switches have multiple effects. Now you have combinatorics. Uh, and you need to, d to understand that the effect was really to the temperature in the room. That light had, had absolutely no effect. So reverse engineering is a um, host of methods, uh, tools, which allow you to collect such data in a certain way, to analyze it and to learn what are particular uh, targets, particular molecular targets, in this case of drugs, which are important for cell migration. Perhaps uh, a key concept or uh, language that's used in biology to explain how things work causally is a pathway. A pathway uh, is a cascade of events. Um, certain molecule is floating around the cell, it is sensed by a receptor, receptor changes configuration, then in the change configuration it interacts with another molecule, which in turn uh, gets the signal. This molecule diffuses from cell membrane to the nucleus. There it starts another event. So it starts transcription, for example. A newly created um, RNA is used to make protein. Those pro the, uh, the protein is now changing the structure of the cell, cell detaches and migrates. This, this pathway language um, is deterministic. 
you have a sense that um, once you flip the switch, the light is on. Uh, but biology uh, doesn't work that way. I, uh, uh, events are stochastic. When, when the molecule has changed the configuration, it becomes a little bit more sticky or a little bit less sticky. Then there are many of those molecules around, some diffuse and some don't. Um, some end up in the nucleus and, and some don't. Uh, so overall, agglomerative uh, effect uh, is important. Therefore, uh, probability theory and statistics uh, has become particularly important in describing the data that uh, uh, comes from biological experiments and also became a language of uh, modeling um, of biological events. So uh, the um, result of this analysis, this sort of analysis, is um, uh, twofold. Uh, first, the reverse engineering means that you have understood the structure. Uh, you have understood uh, what's under the hood. Second, once you understood and you build a model, you could simulate. So rather than doing a biological experiment, which is difficult and costly, uh, you could actually ask what if questions. You could in silico, in the computer, you could say, what if I knock out the gene? What if I apply uh, this drug uh, or, or change a temperature? What does my model uh, predict? This is uh, ultimately a dream to have computerized uh, model, predictive model of a cell, of an embryo, of a whole organism of, or an organ. We're just making very early steps in this direction. Uh, very often we are limited by computing power. With all the great computers, computer networks, supercomputers, um, many of the algorithms involved in such analysis and simulations are uh, computationally expensive. So in order to be able to simulate an organism, we still depend on major advances in computational power. Um, and hopefully we are getting there um, f faster than we think. So we would be able um, to simulate more biology, do less in the lab, um, and that would essentially computerized model would reflect our understanding of nature better. Why is it so critically important to be able to simulate biology in the computer? Uh, the key reason is that uh, we could try in the computer millions of scenarios uh, much easier than we would um, in the lab. One scenario when we really want to try many different conditions and uh, concentrations is uh, drug discovery. Um, discovery of every new drug is, is getting harder and harder uh, and, and harder and harder. Pharmaceutical companies are spending uh, millions upon, upon millions of dollars. Uh, they have libraries of hundreds of thousands of compounds of drug candidates. Now imagine if you had a computer model um, of biology in silico um, and you've, you've taken a new compound and tried how would living matter, how would cell respond to a particular drug candidate in just a few different conditions, but you could extrapolate from those conditions. Then uh, most of what has to be done to try the compound to refine the list of candidates and to arrive at new effective drugs could be done in the computer. And biology in the computer is simply scalable. These approaches are actually already making a huge difference in the field of drug discovery, uh, but it's just the beginning. New drugs for uh, HIV, uh, cancer, diseases which we haven't even discovered are going to be found in silico, in simulations, and then the best candidates tried in vivo.